If you're live streaming, use Wirecast or you will die and go to hell. Matter of fact, Paul, we got to review that video today. Side note. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And let me just pull it up on my other screen real quick. Duplicate. So I can. All right. Yeah, we're good. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Good morning, Billy Jean. What's up? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to uh, Bulletproof Mindset 61. And uh, I want to introduce my guest, the man, the myth. Wait, does, 60, does 61 mean episode 61? Yeah. Yo, congrats. This I, is, that's like, that's a thing. Like people, watch this, ladies and gentlemen listening, everyone understands how hard it is to do anything consistently. It's like the hardest thing ever, right? Like yeah. every West human beings, we go in waves. To have 60 of anything in the world is fucking impressive. So good job, man. That's impressive. I appreciate that, man. Uh, you you've lit that fire. Um, from when the, when I got into Clicks 2.0, I was yeah. always talking about doing videos. I always made an excuse that I needed somebody. And when I first got in, you just kept yelling content, content, content. So between the first video series I made and the gay video series I made, we're about 150, 160 videos, and then we're about yeah. this is number 61 right here. So um, bravo! I appreciate that, man. But today's about you. Today's about you. I've been an admirer of yours for a long time. You are a mentor. I consider you a friend. And uh, you are the CEO of Billy Jean is Marketing. You had your videos viewed over, what you said, 200 million times? That's crazy, right? That's that's crazy. <laughs> it's that's weird crazy. It's weird to think about because you're like, 200 million times is a lot of time. But yeah, man, it just seems <laughs> it's like a lot, lot of time. time. Like, it's, it's weird. It's really weird. Like, yeah. It's a lot of time. So over 200 million times, you just turned 30. I mean, you're the bot, the bringer of truth. And in all honesty, I mean, I, I love everything you bring to the game. But when you get in bot mode, man, that is when I really just start giggling and cheesing because you're just laying it out. And if and if I get offended, that just means I need to work on something. So um, that's my attitude. I appreciate everything you bring to the game. How are you doing this morning, brother? I'm good. You know, I feel like I've been on a kind of like a couple of weeks, like hi hiatus mm -hmm. uh, in regards to like, you know, like turn 30 and then i i did the i did the uh the white girl thing where my birthday lasted like six months really <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's all girls i guess but like yeah man like i literally just i'm not gonna lie i've been partying a lot more than i probably have in the last like three years mm -hmm. and um so you know it was kind of like ah i kind of needed that i felt like it's been like this 10-year journey and i needed to like just go eh. yeah um but uh i'm Heads back in the game. I'm ready. Stop being distracted and to just focus. But also, too, it felt good to just not work, not think about things. And even when I say not work, I'm still working. But you know what I mean. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm here. I'm back. But that's I mean that's part of you know your journey is is taking that time to recharge. So uh, that's one thing that I've been getting from you is I mean because even when we have the uh, the events like you, you know you, you told me before you have to take a little bit of time to recharge it doesn't mean that you're not working but you know how, how, how did you get to that point because i know i'm a hustler and a grinder i know you're yeah, a hustler yeah. and a grinder so how do you get to that point where you can step away and know that you need to recharge because i get to the point where i'm like i need to, like, I need to keep going I, I, strug I struggle with it to be honest with you because i feel like a lot of people will talk about things like getting burned out you hear that expression a lot mm -hmm. and my natural gut instinct to that is like, you're soft. Me when too. Out, I'm like, fuck you, you're soft. That's how I feel. When you, when you really meet motherfuckers who are hustling, you're yeah. like, yo, there's levels to this. Yeah. But you gotta realize, man, like, to me, I've, I've matured in my thinking of like, it doesn't mean you're soft, but like, everyone has their own thresholds. Yeah. And you gotta learn to respect that. And that's been something new for me and something that I'm taking into consideration myself. Um, but at the same time, we're, I feel passionately about it is when people are saying, when people are complaining about their life or how much money they make or, or where they're at or the relationships, and then they're talking about being burnt out. That's when I want to say, shut the fuck up. I Cause you're not that. willing to make that sacrifice. Like mm -hmm. pushing through that feeling of burnout is how you get it. That that's the recipe. That's the magic. So I, I have like a, a weird relationship with the concept of burning out. Um, I think more importantly, it's people need time to focus on themselves yeah. as opposed to burning out. So I feel like, you know, I, I lose that sometimes is like worrying about Billie Jean. Um, and 
So the last few weeks has been nice to like be pretty selfish and just do me for a little bit. And uh, I have felt better. And I feel like I could be a better leader doing that. That's what's up. That's what's Can up. Can you tell them to shut the fuck up over there, please? <laughs> I mean, and like you said, it takes discipline to do that. And I'm from the same school of thought. And it's almost like the gift and the curse, man. But you need a little bit of that to push you to where you need to go. So, I mean, I think when I first came across you, I think you had – you. it was uh, the video with me when you were in your Corvette. It was you and yeah. me. Coolest job ever. And the crazy Rena, thing about let's call over here. Yeah. She can come in. Rena, come here for a sec. I want, you, I want to show you something. He's talking about the first time we saw ad was the Corvette app. Oh, yeah. Or driving. Look at Rena's sweater. It's white and fuzzy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so when we were, we were driving in the car and we came into the office, right? Yeah, and I saw that. And it was crazy because my vision, I had just switched out of doing something else. I was still kind of in a different situation where I just, you know, left corporate America. And uh, yeah. I was like, damn, that dude has it set up the way I, the way I see. My vision is basically what you had. And I've always been told that you follow people that have what you want. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, you look like me, and that's rare in our space. So, yeah, And is. then you keep it real. I mean, you keep it pretty much realer than everybody. And I know <laughs> that I keep it real, but I feel like I'm still, I guess when it comes to being on camera and I'm still yeah. feeling my way out, I think I'm real enough, like I told you, until I watch it back. Yeah. But um, when did you start running paid ads? I mean, was it at that point or was it a little bit before that? Paid, paid ads was like... I was always doing it for someone else. Like when I first got into the game, the, the way that paid ads came about is because I needed customers. Mm -hmm. And like, you, you learn this quick lesson in business that they don't fall from the sky, that if you build it, they yeah. will not come. And you need a way to get the word out. And then you realize, even if you want to give away something for free, it still costs money to tell people it's free. It and that's like one of the biggest, like, like <laughs> new entrepreneur mistakes that I see is the idea of what distribution costs. So I went into Facebook ads for myself because I needed to get my message out there. Mm -hmm. And it cost money to do it, but I knew about this thing called Facebook and I knew I could do it in an affordable way. And I knew if I spent, if I made more money than I spent, it wasn't really a big deal. I could, it like, it wasn't real. So I got obsessed with this whole concept of ROI. Like, hey, Billy, I'm gonna spend, you know, uh, 500 bucks on ads, but if I can make 700 bucks back, that means I made 200 bucks and I got that money back in like a few days. So this is crazy. Like to yeah. me, I got obsessed. I like, I got weirdly obsessed with ads and I got, I had, fuck, I had a spreadsheet called Zordon and Zordon was just stats of everything mm -hmm. that like the number of times people clicks, like did people opt in my cost per lead on this image versus this? I was like a fucking scientist with this shit and I fell in love with it because I was so fascinated that you can pull up a computer and just like put a message in from someone and print money. Like, and I wasn't printing money at the time, but I knew it was possible because I saw other people doing it mm -hmm. and I would make a sell or two. I'd still lose money, but I just, it triggered something for me that this game is going to change the world. Like if people, I'm like, I'm at home, I'm at my mom's house and I'm just making money upstairs while I'm playing Xbox. This is the coolest shit ever. So I got, I got obsessed, weirdly obsessed. A lot of people don't realize that because I was by myself a lot. Like I just was fucking a nerd to this shit. And that's how I am now. Like, it's time to get out there and start meeting some more people for me. But I feel like I've been locked away, especially like you said, learning. And like you said, you challenged me not to keep learning anymore, but to just make use of what I already have and start running more ads. And we just right. started running some more ads now. But like the transition from getting to the point, like, I guess when you're running ads for other people and you're spending other people's money, it makes it more comfortable to want to spend your money, even if you don't necessarily have it. Do you agree? Exactly. Exactly. Well, and do. I mean, when I was running ads at first, it was a credit card. Mm -hmm. It was it was a credit card. So it, and I was just, I was afraid. I don't like that's that's what usually holds people stopping uh, back from ads right now mm -hmm. is they go, well, holy shit. What if I lose this money? Bitch, you're going to spend the money getting a drink with your girls the next day. Now, all of a sudden, because there's no guarantee, there's no safety, there's no safety net. You're unwilling to do it. That's why most people hold it. It's fear. Yeah. So for me, I had to get past the fear because my discomfort grew larger than my fear. And I'm talking about the discomfort of living at my mom's house. Yeah. And how, and how long were you there for you? I remember you said you had to go back, right? Yeah, I was, I was at my mom. Rena, can you get on top of that, please? Um, I was there, just their volume. I was there, uh, I was there, I was there like three times probably. And each time I moved out of my parents' house, I thought like, 
I, I just was premature. Like I thought I was going to like have enough money to figure it out. And then I just, I don't know, I fucking just ended up falling on my face and then I have to come back home, you know? And those conversations, th- that was always tough just because like yeah. ego wise, not just like with my parents, ego, that's like whatever it's your parents, but like friends wise. Yeah. You know, the homies are all like doing their thing. And I'm like this, and here's the thing. When you're an entrepreneur uh-huh. and you're not quote unquote balling, people mock you being an entrepreneur. I know people listening feel that. Like if, yeah. you, if anybody feels that, type it in the chat or some shit. Like when you're not like like killing it in their perspective, you're like, oh, he's an entrepreneur. <laughs> like people talk, <laughs> real, people talk real shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it makes them feel good about their decisions to not do it. And so you know, it's a, it's a game where you're like loved or hated, admired or or looked down upon. It's kind of weird. It is, man. But like. People like us, we push through and we end up getting what we want. It's all about not quitting. And at the end of the day, you have a no quit attitude. I have a no quit attitude. And your community is filled with people of no quit attitude. And uh, I mean, not to jump around, but even like with your community, man, like I've met so many great people in your community. I think that you've put something together that I would have to honestly say I've met the best people I've ever met in your community. Some people wow, I call that friends. Makes me, that makes me feel good. And in all honesty, I know you're an extrovert. I'm an introvert. Naturally, I'm an introvert. It doesn't seem that way, but I've never really had a lot of friends. I got more friends now because of what you put together than what wow, I've had at once in all point of my life. So, I, you know, I, I truly appreciate I that. Well, you know what's beautiful about it is like I think – when it when it started building these like communities it was like something that we just thought like we should do or like had to do there was no like passion behind it the passion came from seeing the community connect so hearing stories like that seeing like i'll see people tag shit out and they're just like oh just a bunch of geniuses meet it up in different parts of the world i'm like damn this became a thing like and that's where for me right now it's it's more of a movement yeah. it's more of a uh uh I don't even know how to explain it. It's just changed. It's not about Billie Jean, right? It's about truly this movement of geniuses, education. And um, I love that. It, it transcends me by a long shot. Um, so it feels good. It's, it's pretty cool. It feels good. And of course, your team, man. And you always give props to your team. I love nah, the they're team. Horrible. They're horrible. They have nothing to do with them. They're just, no, nah. absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> your team, you got a great team, man. And you can't. I'm lucky. Very, very. But I mean, it, it came from all your hard work and sacrifice. So what were some of the biggest challenges from going from by yourself, like you said, upstairs in your mom's room to get to the point where you are now? Like, what are the, I, sure. I would say the three biggest challenges? I'll, 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 yeah, sure. I'll give you the first one. The first one with going from solo to building a team mm-hmm. is the idea of investing again is mentally hard to go through. So yeah. it sounds like this. Damn, I, you know, I've been struggling for the last five years to finally get my business in a place where I can pay my bills, live my life, and not be so stressed out anymore. That's win number one when you're an entrepreneur starting from zero. Like, you didn't have a $3 million business thrown at you. You actually start from zero. Yeah. So that's the first, like, you can breathe. And then you start to realize, like, holy shit, to go to the next level, you can't do it alone. No such thing as a solopreneur. Then you're like, oh, shit, I need to, like, hire people and things like that. But mentally, you have this form of entitlement. And you're like, dude, are you kidding me? I started this business. I don't want to pay anyone to do this. And you, you go to the shit where you try and do shit as cheaply as possible, but then you want people to work as hard as you. And like, it's just this really fucked up thing. Yeah. But here's what no one talks about. is just like you invest money and time into your business when you're starting, mm-hmm. you have to do the same thing with your team. And the challenge with it is mentally is they do not have to be there. So you can invest that time and money. And when you invest into yourself, you get to keep it. It's yours forever. Nobody can take it away from you. When you invest into your team, motherfuckers can disappear. People can leave. And you know what I mean? And you're spending your money. You you know, you're not making money. So you have to make this mental choice, this decision that it's time to invest into my company again. And this time it's in the form of other people. And then you create process so that even if someone does leave, you can still execute on what you do. It's like, I feel like once we hit a million dollars in revenue, that's when like the other side of business began that a uh, whole different slew of other challenges and shit like that. Um, or even like 500 grand, like even just yeah. even a couple hundred grand, like just when there's team involved, everything changed. So I think that's one thing I will give myself credit for is 
I've always been willing to invest into others. Like even like you just like take like the last couple of months, like mm -hmm. I flew a bunch of people to the 10 X conference. I, I fly whenever I roll to events, I'm always bringing a lot of people with us on our team. Uh, we just bought some kind of sales training. I think we got like Cardo and you um, for this. I just sent the the video team to what the, what was that shit called in a B. Yeah, to NAB um, for there. And I mean, these investments cost like tens of thousands of dollars to do. Yeah. And so, but once you embrace that, um, it changes everything, you know, and, and you get to you get to see that return um, in the form of the company growing. And so, yeah. Well, even like you said, with investing in them, you in, in, investing in us. I mean, I've won plenty of money just on the training. Just the fact that you're just willing to give away. I mean, I know that you just won't give away all your money, but just the fact that you're willing to give away $100 for I think I won $100 last week for guessing any given Sunday. Willie Beeman. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the lengths that you're willing to go to to keep people engaged. And I remember the first time you did that, I was just like, damn, like, not that I'm stingy, but to give away 100 bucks, especially for something like that. And I was, it just... I don't know. It just gave me a deeper level of appreciation. I have those things, man. I have those reservations of like, bitch, I'm not about to give away like a hundred bucks. But once you do things like that, you see the greater impact and you're mm -hmm. happy to do it. So like when I say like, I'm going to call and like, all right, guys, hundred bucks to the next person gets this question, right? It's always before, sometimes I'm joking. I just want to keep people engaged and show love, mm -hmm. but it's always before I want to really drive a serious point home. And it's like when I teach and I'm teaching for hours at a time, there's like three things I usually want people to take away. So usually before one of those three things, that's when I do the cash so that everybody catches it. So everybody pays attention. Because again, as, as nice as it is that I'm giving away money, the more engaged that people are, the more they take action, the more they're going to come back and continue to pay us. So you realize like even the nice acts definitely have a, a self-gratifying side to it of like, making more money you know so but once you start living and realizing that all this shit is full circle and that you can help other people and they will help you and it's this big thing dude, that's when life changes you know that's when life changes so in your entrepreneurial journey who would you say helped you the most i mean besides your team of course but getting from because i remember you said you had the oil change business and then you switched from this yeah. to this to that yeah so who, who's helped you the most get to where you where you are right now <sighs> Real shit, and this is, I'll tell you other things. Now, let me let me preface this with this, is I, oh, I like that mug. The person who has helped me the most is myself. And I say that being very aware that there's a ton of people who helped me get here, would not be here today without them. It's yeah. all about team. It's it, I say that understanding that. But I want to deliver the message right now that the only fucking person who is going to save you is you. Exactly. The only person who's going to fucking believe in you the way that you want to be believed in is you. So the second you start doubting yourself, it's over. You guys wonder why some of the greatest athletes of all time are the most cocky. Float like That'd a butterfly, be. sting like a bee. You, you see what I'm saying? It's because confidence is the number one possession, skill, secret potion, spinach that somebody can have is fucking confidence. So when people see people and they try and knock people for their confidence, Fuck you. You're knocking their superpower. Yeah. Because confidence is what, when someone takes a shot at you, when they talk shit at you, when they make fun of you, when they comment negative things, when the world feels like it's against you, confidence is the only thing that gets you through. So mm -hmm. everybody needs to embrace confidence. I want everybody to be confident in shit. And then confidence grows from results. So when you have a micro win, you need to celebrate it and own it and like, just let it stack your confidence. Like you need to be out here confident stacking people, stack that confidence. That's one thing I got to get better at and I've been working on is celebrating the wins because for me, there, there's so many things I do and, and you met Danielle and sometimes I'll be sitting talking to Danielle and she'll remind me of these things. And sometimes I'll even break down and be like, damn, I did all that and I just don't yeah. realize what I've done because to me, it's just, it's, it's another day at the office. It's, it's, you want to hear something fucked up? What's up? That doesn't change. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is, this is this is the quote, people don't really comprehend it, but the quote of happiness is a destination or it's not a destination, like, that's what that means. In other words, in everyone's head, you go through stages. For entrepreneurs, it looks something like this. I just want to prove that it's possible and make money. That's phase one. Yeah. But then once you hit that, you don't celebrate that. You don't take into consideration. You go right into phase two, which is, cool, I want to just make enough to be able to pay my bills. And then you go from that, and then you go to the next phase of, all right, now that I've paid my bills, I just want to have like another extra cash so like money's not tight. I'm not worried about it all the time. And then you go, 
all right, now I want to save up. And then you go, okay, now I want to buy a house. And then you go, okay, now I want to get an office. Okay, now I want to give a team. Now I want to get benefits. Now I want to get um, uh, a car. Now I want to get a sports car. Now I want to get an exotic car. Now I want to go on vacation. But this time I don't want to fly coach. Now I want to fly a fucking first class. Okay, fucking first class. Now a private jet. Now you take a private jet. Someone's got a bigger jet. Now you need this. It doesn't fucking stop. Yeah. You just keep changing your fucking destination. Yeah. And so that was what 30 was for me is like, I don't, but I don't need anymore. I have a fucking Ferrari, a Bentley, and a fucking Tesla. What the fuck do I need another car for? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's this, it's this never enough feeling that's just, it will fuck with you. If you just don't choose happiness and to be happy, mm-hmm. you just keep fucking chasing shit. And it's toxic. And it's only in America. That's an America thing. Yeah. And so uh, greed will fuck you up. Greed will take you over. Greed will, uh, you know, do it. And I, I don't want to call it too much ambition, but I, I just think the the message, you, you just got to, I think that's why it's important to like set a goal mm-hmm. and like design your lifestyle and understand what it is that you really want. Cause it's never the money you want the money for X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Then when you have those things, embrace them, cherish them, do things to experience those things with the people that you love. And yeah, not think, to go too off railing, but hopefully that made sense. It did because um, I think my first series was twelve weeks to a ten k agency, and once and I remember when we got into sell like a genius. I think I wrapped it up by then. But between you and a few other people in the group, they were basically saying, and I know you did a, uh, an exercise: re- reverse engineer what you want and how you want mm-hmm. your life to be. And I and I do that consistently. Like I go through sell like a genius pretty pretty frequently just to, to re-up myself to get out here for my sales game. But it yeah, makes right. a lot of sense because like you said, the money is just a vehicle to get what you want and what you normally say is choices. The money is yeah, really yeah. just for choices for you and your family and having exactly. clarity. Clarity is like my favorite. When you say clarity, I'm like, all right, because I have to always remind myself clarity, 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 yeah. choices, choices. It's choices. real, man. It's fucking real. And uh, yeah, this is real shit. <laughs> a lot of realness. So I, I, don't, I don't think I asked this already, but what was the the hardest challenge you had to overcome? Like you said, besides going in back to your mom's house and uh, the Eagle. That wasn't, you know, and I, I want to shed light on that too. Going back to my mom's house, to me, that wasn't like a bad thing. My parents live in a nice gated community right now on a golf course. I had the whole upstairs to myself and my mom cooks like a beast and it's bomb <laughs> as fuck. So like, I never pitied myself mm-hmm. and not just from that situation, but then there was also times where I was just living on friends' couches and like being a bum and like fucking borrowed and had shit in my car everywhere. I had a fucking Honda Accord. And I just, I'm not kidding when I tell you, I had the driver's seat, the mm-hmm. passenger seat in the back seat had every, like so much clothes and shit from it. Cause I was always on the go. The trunk, there was virtually no room. It was like the nuttiest thing you've ever seen. And so <laughs> like, it, it was weird, man. But like, here's the thing. Like, if you met me during that time or you knew me during that time, I was never a little bitch. Mm-hmm. Like some people are like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so depressed. Like I'm fucking living in my car. I'm like, yo, fuck it. I got all my shit in my car. I can go anywhere right now. Let me change real quick. Hold up. I got shirts. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it became like, it was a thing. So like never any point in time was I ever like in my own feelings. Mm-hmm. I never draped. You know what I mean? Like I, I was always like, who cares? Like, Again, I, and I think that was the the blessing that as when we were really little, we were always at my grandma's house, right? And my grandma was, you know, my mom is one of 13, you know, and they, they lived in the hood. And so when you're, when you're, when you see this shit as a kid, like your norm is like everything that was happening in my life was still great because you saw the shitty stuff. Yeah. So getting, and that's why I have perspective and vision tattooed on my wrist. So like when we we're little, like we got exposed to all these things that became norm, you know? And, and so it, nothing ever just felt that bad, you know? Exactly. Um, and I got to see the progression of like different lifestyles. So like, you know, when my when my dad was first coming in the game, I think we lived in like a little tiny ass apartment over like off the 94, like whatever. Then we moved to like a little house in Spring Valley. Then they got like the little neighborhood cul-de-sac house Then they moved to the golf course. So I got to experience these different like phases, which really, really helped. And then I oh no, also they hooked me up with like the private Catholic schools. So I got to see some of the other lifestyle shit from some of the other kids. Um, but I think when you have that type of perspective, it's really hard to pity yourself because yeah. you just keep top of mind like I'm a bitch if I'm complaining. And I think everybody should have more experiences. That's why I'm like really passionate about like showing perspectives. And like when you when I'm live, you hear me talk about like racism and I make a lot of jokes and like a lot of offensive things because I want people to be uncomfortable. I want to push people to think about like weird shit and I want to make normal the things that everybody thinks is taboo to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you do a good job of doing that. 
Thank you. I think you do a damn good job of doing that. Being racist, yo, Billy, you're a really good job of being racist and sexist. And you're just yeah, <laughs> number one. Number one, son. <laughs> I mean, you say it all the time, like you said. Uh, I mean, I think it just lights, and that's just who you are. I think the thing I love about you the most is you're always just you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think uh, that's probably, I, I, you know, when people when I get people like one on one and have a conversation with them, they bring that up a lot, and it brought awareness to me that so many people are living not being themselves. Yeah. And so it's made me aware of it. So now I feel like, one, I'm just like that. But now I feel like a duty and obligation to always stay me. So, like, there's days where, like, put it this way. The reason why, like, my favorite thing to do is, to, like, drive my Bentley or Ferrari and have a basketball shirt and, like, T-shirts on mm-hmm. and, like, house shoes. Because to me, that just slippers? feels like, you know what I mean? That feels like my fucking, like, yo, like, I don't, I don't need to fucking wear no suit, like, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm fucking, I have my tattoos, I got my double ears pierced and like fucking, I talk, I curse like a sailor. Like I love breaking down that norm of what success looks like. So to me, the idea and the movement behind being a genius is like being ultimately you. When people think of genius, they think of like old school Albert Einstein bullshit. Yeah. That, that's changed. That looks different now. Yeah. A genius could look like you. A genius could look like me. It could look like, not Rena, but it could look like any of these oh, other people good. back here. You know <laughs> what I mean? So like it could, it could be there. So I, I'm I'm in alliance with you when it comes to like you said, just being you. Like like right now, I wear my t shirt. You see my t shirts. I mean, yeah. I like dressing nice. I like I have suits. I I have slacks and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's I'm coming to bring a result. And people do judge you. People are going to judge all the time. <laughs> and if they can't get with it, then it, you know you're just not the right person to work with. More than likely. Yeah, and that's the fun thing. So now, like this year, I've been speaking on a lot of stages. And like again, it's like you know every other speaker like suited up you know, the, the Gucci bag, you know what I mean? All this. And then when I come up in like a fucking light pink fucking bomber jacket like with my fucking gold shoes on and like, <laughs> what the fuck is up, San Diego? Make noise! You know, like it's a rap concert or something. <laughs> and just completely warp how people interpret education and, and, and business and, you know, because now I got like a little track record, you know, so I can be like, it's like you, my resume will force you to respect me. You know what I mean? Like the number of people, the lives we change will force you to, to pay attention. Mm-hmm. So that's it. And you spoke on that a few times in, in the past, just you had to lead with results. Like you yes. said, you know, I think you were saying uh, being young and black and, and walking into these places and demanding respect without results is kind of hard to do. So you just right. found a way to make sure that you demanded respect and, and gave it to you. And I will say this, I shouldn't have gotten it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the difference is I realize I didn't have any case studies i didn't have any previous track record i didn't have anything so when a business owner wouldn't take me seriously i didn't get like mad about it like oh my god how dare they do you know who i am i wasn't shit and nobody wants to be honest with themselves about where they are just like yo it's it's okay to not be shit temporarily yeah it's not okay to not acknowledge that you ain't shit yet you know and i don't mean like you treat people differently but i do mean like I, too many times, like people will message the biggest influencers in their space and they want to team up and it's so one sided. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you what do you mean? Why do you want to link up with like the, the top, everyone like you want to do an interview with Tony Robbins? Do you have something that Tony Robbins wants? No. So you're not there yet. You got to build to that. And so um, I think just being honest, being aware, being patient. Um, and uh, knowing that you got to you got to you got to ball before you got to you got to crawl before you ball. I feel you know, so yeah. let, let me ask you this. What do you want to be known for? Changing the education system and giving people who feel like they don't have opportunities. That's typically uh, poor people. Unfortunately, it's typically people of color a lot, too. They feel like there's no way to succeed or to get out of their circumstance because um, of the deck of cards that they're being given. But I literally believe with a laptop, and you know I teach this all the time, yeah. and a cell phone and a willingness to learn, now more than ever in history, you can learn these skills that will virtually allow you to do whatever the fuck you want. So that would be the biggest thing for me. If I like, if I died tomorrow and then like, you know, a bunch of people from around the world like shared their stories about how they were in exposition and it dramatically changed their life because of a, a video or training that they watch, that's the game for me. And I want to be, I want to go down as the greatest educator of all time for that. You see what I'm saying? Because I want to be the one who empowered the most people gave people the most options and choices and gave, that's why I'm so like weirdly like militant about like always teaching action steps 
Because mm-hmm. every time someone listens to me, I want them to have that one thing that they implemented in their life right away that literally got them a paycheck that they could take to the bank and go take their mom to dinner. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever that thing is. Pay their rent. Pay their gas and electric bill. Drink water. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. I actually, uh, before I even started uh, paying to be in your programs, I told you that, you know, you gave me some things to, to be able to go out there and make some money. So, you know, all I wanted to do was be able to make some money so I can pay and get more because I think, especially in our community, the uh, I would say mentoring is something that's not really taught. Like if you play sports, you're mentored, but talk about how you got into that transition of, of, of understanding the importance of a mentorship and coaching. I, I wish I could say like, oh, you know, I just knew that mentoring was the way to go. I didn't. I was stubborn. I was like them. I you you hear me crash down so much on that now because I was so arrogant. Like I just remember the confidence I used to have. Granted, I was living at my mom's. Bare, I didn't have any cash. I was always borrowing money. But the confident, the weird confidence that I had that I was like this business guy and I knew what I was talking about. And then I don't know, I, I just kept fucking up. And then I started, you know, the first thing I did is I, I had my boy and my boy had some cash from some shit. And I was like, hey, man, just invest into this like agency stuff. I was like, I think I can get people to pay us to do Facebook ads. Like, give me some cash. He's like, what do you need the cash for? And I was like, I don't know. There's this one fucking video from this guy like Frank Kern who like does this shit. I just want to buy his course. He's like, how much is it? He's like, 2,000 bucks. He's like, are you fucking nuts? You're going to go pay 2,000 bucks for some fucking videos? When we do this, I'm like, dog, you got to trust me. And he always did. So he gave me the money and that was the first thing I bought. And then I was like, okay, well, I came in with like a really hungry mentality to that. And I remember taking the course and I was able to learn like a gazillion things in that. And then it shifted. Oh my God. Here I've been sitting upstairs every day trying to bang my head against the wall and motherfuckers got courses like these out. So then I got obsessed and I started buying everything. And then I started learning and I'm like, I'm an obsessive person. So like once I started learning, I got like, I went all in, you know what I mean? Like I just followed people then I started like going to the events and so the results is what got me addicted you know what I'm saying I yeah. felt the high it was like I took my first shot of heroin and I went oh shit this is great because I do that so much you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and when, like and what we did like when we were in clicks because that was the first time I actually had to go through your course but yeah repetition 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 so when you get a course are you the type of guy that goes through a certain thing plenty of times or you just go through I, it I probably could be better at that but what I am aware of is like I use courses mm-hmm. and I, I literally go through them with the with the intention of solving a current problem that I'm facing so like I have like something that I'm looking to take out of that course before like I don't approach a course with like all right what's this going to do for me mm-hmm. I go okay I need to learn how to like manage people so I'm buying this course to take that from it's my responsibility to take what I need from the course so I think that's what I've been good at. But with teaching, that's made me more aware of repetition. So like even take like our school of genius, shout out to our geniuses, obviously all love us, my favorite people on the planet, right? But at the same time, it's challenging sometimes because people want to go to the next thing. And then I'll, they'll, they'll submit stuff for, to be reviewed or to the partner program. And I'm like, no, you don't need to be looking at the next thing. You need to practice writing ads. Yeah. Cause the fundamentals are missing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you you like you want to go play the game of soccer, but you still don't really know how to dribble or pass or shoot. You're not, you know what I mean? And that's when you fail. And then you, you look for other options to like do stuff. That's why that foundation is so important. And that's the thing with entrepreneurship that I would also like to change is with the gene pool, the idea is that it's school that never ends. Yeah, I love that. School, school got us so fucked up, like, you know, trying to p- put a, a finish line a finish line on education. Remember the feeling of high school? Oh, I'm never going to school again. I hate and maybe school. you went to college, you go, oh, fuck, I'm never going to class again. Ah. <laughs> and it was like, wait a second. The second you stop learning is the second you stop earning. Yeah. And then as adults, once you get life and family and friends and, and bills and responsibilities, to learn is like a process. And then they made learning yeah. so fucking boring, nobody wants to do it. That's why I always say entertain, educate, execute. Because if you can t- find a way to make it entertaining and fun and tactical, it changes the perspective. So now, you know, we got people in the gene pool fucking literally been coming to class for two years straight. And it's just dialed in. It's a habit that they've created. And it's, it's a beautiful thing. So, I, you know, I'd love to have an army. You know, 10,000, 100,000 people who are dedicated to the Tuesday trainings, they realize they got to get it in. They never stop. And that's what we do. 
And like you said, Gene Pool is amazing. I've been a part of that for about a year and some change now. SOG is amazing. And uh, like you said, I wouldn't change it, change it for the world. Um, like you said, most people don't like to learn in school, but and neither did I. I just really did a good job, so I wouldn't have to repeat nothing or go back and do any <laughs> extra work. So, but when it comes to learning, like what I'm learning with you and some of the things we talked about before we got on, like I can literally listen to that all day. Like I don't, I don't know how people get bored. There's so much information to consume, especially if it's about something that you're passionate about. How could you ever really be bored? Yeah. Well, the, the two challenges that people face are arrogance and ignorance, yeah. meaning arrogance. Oh, I already know all this stuff. Da, 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 da. People, people, because they've heard it before, they think that means knowing it. The application, when you can execute the application is when you know it. Yeah. And then the other side is the ignorance, just not realizing how important some of those things are. You know, think about like school before. The reason why people take that mentality, because when we're trained in school, we're literally like trained to get through it. Yeah. The focus is on getting the piece of paper. The yeah. focus is not on mastery. No. That's why it's so fucked up. So that's why you have people like me who just, you know, I was in class. I just sat there and tuned out. I'm just like, I just need to know the bare minimum. What can I do to just pass this class? Jones and that's how I do that now. Stupid. <laughs> it was dumb. It was really dumb of me. But then at the same time, it was dumb of them to teach some of the shit that they taught in a business fucking degree. So, you know, that was, I guess it was blame in multiple places. I mean, there was, I mean, Joseph going through that right now, man, I think he's just, he's at another level when it comes to his thought process, but, and I used to be there too. You, you're, you're sitting in school, everything's easy. And you're just like, all right, what can I do? Like you said, what can I, what's the least amount I can do to get it done? Yes. Just, just try to get it over with. You know, he's selling the teacher on some crappy work. He's like, Hey, you know, he hands this in and she's like, that's the best you could do. And he just shrugs his shoulders and he just, you know, you got to keep quiet when you're making sales. And he just sit there right. dead eye stare. And she's just like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, make him do it again. You know, he, he's a salesman. Man. He's actually, I have him watching your stuff now because I feel like a lot of the things I learned about sales, I've been learning in the last five years. And if I would have right. knew that, like, I remember when I first got into network marketing years ago, the guy said, most kids get told no thousands of times before they're, you know, two years old. What do you think mm -hmm. that does to them in their sales psyche? And I was like, damn. So back then I stopped wow. telling my kids no. I started finding different ways to say no. But like with my son now, if I tell him basically no in another word, if he keeps pushing, I'll see where he's going. As long right. as it's nothing outrageous, because I know that he's going to need that skill and I don't want to kill it. Anymore. Yeah, see, my, my dad, my dad was great at that because he's always been in sales. So I had to sell for everything in my life, like to eat breakfast. Like, oh, you want to eat breakfast today? All right, well, what am I going to get? Like, he didn't do it that far, but... <laughs> I was about to start doing it. <laughs> but what he would do, he would do shit like... Like, when he says, like, uh, hey, I want to go play outside. No, just say no, just just because. Mm -hmm. well, why can't I go outside? I don't know. Why should you be able to go outside? Did you do your chores? Da, da, da. Like, it became this, like, practiced thing. So, you know, then I took that with me with everything. And every time I hear no now, I'm just like, okay. You know, and there's some things you got to respect people's boundaries and shit, but nonetheless, like, you yeah. know, it's a give and take. For real. All right, last last question before we walk through the gay process. Three books that you would recommend? I've been, oh, confession, weakness, bad thing. I haven't been reading. I, like this last year, I've had the lowest like amount of reading I've done in the last four or five years. I've had the most amount of coaches, so it's not like I'm not intaking in a yeah. different format, but I've, I've been bad at that. Like I have not gotten into books um, in a minute. So uh, I- All time. Just all time. You know- it just, it depends on where you guys are at. Anyone listening right now and you're wondering like, what book should I read? If you're just starting off, you should just like read like Outliers um, by, uh, by Malcolm. And the reason, yeah, and the reason why is because it will teach you to think differently about being. But then if you're like, have a business and you're, and you're in a place where you're hiring a lot of people, you should read Scaling Up by Vern Harnish. Um, if you're coming into business and you're really having trouble like financially, you should read this book called Profit First. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of books. My point with saying all of this mm -hmm. is you should read the book according to the, what you're missing. What book is going to solve the most problems for you right now? If yeah. you can't get out of your own head, you should read some shit by Tony Robbins about personal development, right? Like, it just totally depends on your problem. So everyone listening, ask yourself, I'd say write down the three greatest problems that you're solving and then Google like best books for blank and they will show up because they're the best sellers. So you don't really have to do much research, just buy them. They're best sellers for a reason, yeah. you know? Before we before I go through the gay process with you, I just want you to take a moment and... Uh, let people know what you guys got going on, any links you want to share. I mean, you're more than welcome to promote on here, brother. 
Okay, oh, yeah. I, what I would tell everyone to do is to, if you need more customers, hire Gerard. That is my thing. You need, you need, to, you need to hire your boy. He's fucking, uh, I've done a lot of teaching for a while now. I, I probably, I can't, like tens of thousands of people. And literally, I think you have probably the best like work ethic and probably ever, at anyone that I've encountered. You're always on yeah. your stuff. You stay diligent, you make it a priority and you implement um, and you do your thing, man. So like, it's just very rare when you find someone who's hustling. So that would be my advice to everybody listening is buy shit from you. There you go. Well, I want them to buy shit from you. And, you know, there's people out there that, and I go appreciate that. Pool, go to try the gene yeah. or something, join the gene pool. It's like a fucking hundred bucks a month. Uh, you know, if you're not willing to invest a hundred bucks a month into your education, fuck yourself or whatever. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, my that's the realness that I love, but yeah. I, I truly appreciate that compliment, man. And like, I don't know, you've given me so many over, over the year and some change. I feel like I've known you so much longer. I, I truly appreciate yeah. that. And like I said, all I want to do is help you help more people because the same way you've been helping me. And I know that in my own area here, there's not a lot of people that do what I do. So a lot of times I know that if someone says they're getting marketing done, it doesn't mean that it's not effective. But if they're right. not a genius, there's a good chance that they're not doing doing right, uh, doing what they right. could be doing for you. Just be a genius, of, damn it. Gene yeah, you, pool. You set the bar extremely high. So try the genepool.com. Anything else that you got going on that you want to push real quick? That's it, man. I think everybody just go out. I have one. Everyone just uh, go out and do something fucking nice for somebody. You know? Like go out of your way to do something nice for someone. I think just golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. And that's all I really got. All right. Well, to wrap up the show, what I always go through with all the guests, and I've had a, quite a few of our geniuses up here, is the gay process. And you already they know from the my gay process. Yeah, sometimes people say that, but it's gay. What is? <laughs> oh, the gay G A V E. Oh, guy, I didn't know what you were saying for real. Yeah, okay, cool. Allergies, allergies, but gay. <laughs> okay. You know the video series I've been producing, which, by the way, you're behind the genius, man. I I, I would like to see you have more of those episodes because those are really. Really, really we have somewhere sitting on actually paul's working on a dope one thank you for saying that because we I, I i enjoy those the most because i'd be forgetting the journey and shit and it's a cool way to document everything um but yeah all right gabe i should have known that i knew that gabe yeah but G-A-V. again for me documenting my journey and doing what i'm doing now with all those videos i've done is is partly because of what you've been repeating yourself so all right gabe Love process it, first thing what are you grateful for i'm grateful for uh Wow, what a question. Um, I have a lot to be grateful for right now, man. I, I think I'm, honestly, I'm probably most grateful for my daughter right now if I have to choose like a thing. Um, you know, I, I'm grateful for provide for my daughter. I think that makes me feel happy. Um, knowing that like she's good, whatever she needs, she's there. If I need to go to her like right now, I can drive and move things around, have enough flexibility to be there for her. Um, I think that's probably what I'm most grateful for right now. Um, I'm grateful to, I'm really lucky right now. I have a lot to be grateful for. Team, family, relationships, um, you know, uh, be able to be on a platform and, and impact lives, you know? So yeah, I'm grateful for a lot of shit, man. I feel good. Awesome. Now, appreciation's very similar, but different. So when I say appreciation, what's the first thing that go, comes to mind? Um, I appreciate opportunities. That's the first word that came to my mind. Right now, I appreciate a lot of opportunities that we have. Like, you know, we're just in Arizona with um, Cody Sperber, like the clever investor. He's just a fucking beast. He runs a business great. And then we're at lunch and then Dean uh, comes by. Like, I'm grateful. Like, there's a lot of cool opportunities to meet a lot of people right now that are extremely influential, smart, intelligent. I'm really grateful for the opportunities right now. So. That's crazy. Rena. Yeah. On my appreciation in the morning, I, I, I always start off appreciate the opportunities, similar to what you just said. So. It's huge. Same page. Last thing is a vision. What's your vision for yourself, your family, and your business? Man, I'm actually pretty bad at that right now. I've actually been doing a lot of mentorship with that myself. Um, I would say for vision, one of the things that I'm happy about is the studio. I have a very clear vision for like business right now. And what I mean by that is um, 10,000 members in the gene pool, 1,000 people in the school of genius, 
this office that you're looking at here in the background will be completely revamped in four months. Uh, it'll be the sickest creative studio for teaching and educating in the world. And it's going to be insane. Um, so vision wise to like create this platform to educate is amazing right now. But my challenge for that, my vision outside of that is it's been like, I've been all in on that. I don't even have another vision for like me. Does that make sense? So like, I'm trying to figure out like outside of business, like creating that identity. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like even on the family side and balancing that time and shit, like that's a little bit different of a challenge. So I feel you. I feel you. So Billy Jean, we got your gratitude. We got your appreciation. We got your visualization. The E stands for every day. When do we do it? When do we what? When do we do it? When do we go through that process? Oh, I see what you're saying. Every day. Like, that's the kicker. <laughs> that's the got kicker. you. Wait, I fucking love that. Okay, then let's run through that back again. All right, so All right, Billy. So that was gratitude, uh -huh. appreciation, uh -huh. vision. Visualization. Every day. Every Visualization. Day. Every day. That's beautiful. Everyone, you should do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Awesome real shit. That's what, that's I don't what think keeps I going. that this whole time. I saw, I don't think I realized that. That's dope. Well, that's why I've been saying it, it seems weird. You just see gave, 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 gave. But in all honesty, I made that up because of my son. Like, because like you said, there's so much stuff going on. And you said it on your birthday post. You feel like you're moving 300 miles an hour and you just want to take a step back for gratitude with something along those lines. And I really started that whole thing a few years ago behind that because I spent a lot, a lot of time with my son. But I feel like I miss everything sometimes and I'm right there. And of course, Danielle's right. like, you're not. So every morning, every night I go through that process. And of course, in between the day, but I always start my day a, a certain way and always end my day a certain way because sometimes that's all you can control. And that's what that that's process awesome, is all about. Well, I like it and I recommend everyone do that. That's real shit. I mean, right there, I mean, the stomach, I didn't even, like, see, that's what I'm saying. I, I didn't even have answers for that. I was like, shit, I don't think about that enough. Well, you're, so. off, you're the king off the cuff, so I knew you would come with it. Ha, <laughs> word, man. Well, I appreciate you having me, dude. I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, follow him at Billie Jean is Marketing. What's your, what's your IG again? Billy Jean is marketing. Where everything Billy Jean is marketing. YouTube, Billy Jean is marketing. Uh, maybe, yeah, Billy Jean is marketing. All right, man. They need to know it. They need Billy Jean is marketing. Billy Jean is marketing. Buy all this stuff, man. Like I said, he's an amazing teacher, has an amazing team, and uh, he has an amazing mission. And that's part of the reason why I'm following him. So I appreciate you coming on, brother. And I'll definitely be talking to you soon. All right, my dude. Later. All right, later, everybody. Appreciate you. My man, I'm about to run into uh, a meeting right here.